yeah. LG and Young, are they the black trinity? It's repeat breeding taboo in the bulldog world. The future of U.S. dog men, scatterbred heaven or tight bread hell? Let us analyze the evidence on this episode of Bulldog Court. Court. Bulldog community, please rise. This is your host, Get a Hold Jones, because we got to get a hold of the game. Of the game. Of the game. Of the game. Court is now in session. Ooh, we man. Back for another episode of Bulldog Court. Once again, I am your host. Get a hold of the game, because we simply got to get a hold of the game. I'm really appreciative for everybody checking Bulldog Court out on the Sporting Dog Archive. Uh, I'm appreciative for everybody who check out the shorts and the stories and, you know, the videos that we have up here and just, you know, I just really appreciate it. Just giving us a listen, dropping a comment, you know, pressing the like button, you know, all that's appreciated. And maybe one day I have some, you know, sport dog archive gear, you know what I'm saying? Some different things that might represent the blue dog community in the right way. Um, and maybe touch in on your perspective on uh, where you sit in the families of all the different American people or terriers. Maybe that's something that we can look into in the future. But right now, we're about to get into these cases right now. And for this case, Thibodeau, LG, and Young. Is this the black trinity in the dog world? Frame this like this for a reason. It's because when we look at the African American dog man and his contributions, they are very vast. But at the same time, not spoken on enough, not recorded in, uh, in, in, in the same type of detail as some of our counterparts when it comes to how long we have been involved with these types of animals. And how well we've done with these type of animals. Uh, even back to the early 1900s, you understand? Very successful, and probably even before that, probably even in Ireland and Scotland as well, probably in Spain as well, England as well. Our hands have, um, have touched these animals. And we've had a contributing part, but it hasn't been well documented. So I frame this in the sense of these three dog men pretty much started off in the same family tree, the Carver line, specifically stomping out old uh, Petrie's grand champion or the stabber. Putin's Butcher Boy, that blend along with the Eli being incorporated with so slim dogs of this nature to encompass their families of dogs. And then you see where uh, Thibodeau would get his a lot from Carver, you know, and Thibodeau got dogs like Carver's, uh, Carver's car baby who would become Thibodeau's car baby. Then you have dogs like Chain Puppy, which is a name that's kind of hard to forget. From the Whistle Slim, you get Thibodeau's female, who was owned by LG. Then LG's Miss Kim, then Grand Champion Tina, LG's Twin, LG's Jacoby, LG's Champion Little Man. And by the way, Thibodeau also bred Coy's Betty Joe, which is the mother of, or the dam of, Grand Champion Banjo and Grand Champion BB Red. Then you look at Young, with Young and McCool's Bad News Bell, and she produced Champion Bell Star and Champion Tabasco Red. And a slew of other good dogs, you know. And 
you know about bad news, you know about uh, Miss Kim and a lot of these animals, and then you, you see where, you know, I, I use the analogy of a black trinity because, you know, you got in church, you know, you had a father, son, and Holy Spirit, you know, but you have a one that fathered everything in these bulldogs, and then the others came in under that and continue to push forward these families of animals and they have stayed true to this for many many years and and on that side um you can look at them as in bulldog in bulldogging as the first black trinity of dogmen because they have stayed so true to that line and that family of dogs throughout the years and I don't ever recall any of them ever straying from it. And they have also gained, you know, other disciples, you know, if you will, from uh under that call of a strand. You can even look at people like the late Mr. Um, Lacefield and others who have gotten dogs from these same, this same Black Trinity incorporated it into what they were doing. And they began to use it extensively. For the rest of their time on earth. Do you understand? For the rest of that time on earth, they use these, these hounds with Thibodeau, LG, and Young throughout the pedigree. And so you have even more that have come after that who are staying true to that. You know, you know, when you start talking Carver, there are many different branches. We understand there are many different branches of the Carver tree. But these dog men in particular have stayed true to this. Now on the other side, you may have, and not to limit the mindset or the intellect of the Bulldog community, you may know of somebody or a group of guys even further back than where I have reference to. You may be talking about, well, nah, man, that's 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 new stuff what you're talking about. If you're talking about the history of dog men, you know, back before Kobe used to get his dogs from the high tower brothers, and they was really the real trinity because they kept stall him off and a lot of those dogs, you know. Oh, people don't really some people may not know that, you know. But there's truth to a lot of this historically with the with the names been left out to Save and glorify the guilty and cover up the heroes. It's, you know, sometimes it can be, you know, a cold blooded game. Uh, and it always kind of have been for the most part, but it's been a beautiful game as well at the same time. But then you might look and you say, nah, man, that ain't the Holy Trinity. Triple M is the true Holy Trinity. That's not the one. Triple M is the M M and M, and the legacy they stay for. And even though two of the M's no longer here, we know that they were actually family. They were actually father, son, and uncle. You see what I'm saying? So they were like Trinity for real, Trinity, because they were actually family. And they and they got a line of animals that at the time were kind of unconventional you know you really don't see you really didn't see that cross before you saw them do it with the jeep alligator or jeep mayfield sunshine mayfield's n-word heavily or when they took um the triple out red stuff and put it with the uh mayfield sunshine stuff how they ripped through this game to the point that the late Miss Pat Carver actually thought that they were white guys, but they were actually African American guys because the way that they were just <laughs> annihilating, oh. you know, destroying some of these nicknames that we read in these books, they just assumed this gotta be another one of those guys. But it was So you may save them. So it's just a, it's something that I'm proposing to the community. Do you believe that Thibodeau, LG Young, is this the Black Trinity?
or the Black Bulldog Trinity. And once again, I want to reiterate this, that I am not the judge nor jury, or it's up to you, the Bulldog community, to decide. In the case of Thibodeau, LG, and Young, are they the Black Trinity and the Bulldogs? This case is now dismissed. We'll get back to the show after these important messages. Check out one of the best dog talk shows out here. Bulldogging with Bo on Dogman TV. Thursdays and Sundays, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Shout out to his co-host, Nonstop. For this next case... Is repeat breeding taboo in the bulldog world? You might be saying to yourself, get a Hope James. Why are you saying this? You know what, bulldog community? I'm so glad you asked. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Because of this. You ever heard of the old term, if it ain't broke? Don't try to fix it. And we all know who has spent any amount of time in this game. We know how difficult it is to come up with your idea of the perfect all-around bulldog. Some of us have had this thing we call luck. And it happened in your first breeding and you never look back. Lucky you. But for the rest of us, it's taken a great amount of time patience, money, calculating, whatever the case may be, instincts, or whatever the case may be, to come up with what we came up with, the all-around bulldog. But after we get the all-around bulldog, why don't we see enough repeating of that said perfect all-around bulldog? Now, in history we can clearly see that there were some very significant repeat breedings done. But when we look at some of the baddest, you know, very rare when you see those breedings, do you ever hear about, you know they bred those two dogs that threw, you know, what if they had a repeated the Grand Champion Zebo breeding? What if they had a repeated tornado and got two or three more tornadoes or possibly a cyclone yeah. what if they had just you know and we see well you know like we talk about Rip Boy Jocko and they try different variations of the same breeding of two families we put the Jocko on top Rip Yellow John on bottom they put the Yellow John on top Jocko on bottom different variations very successful but we, right here today we're talking about straight up and down repeat breeding and where we see where uh, a particular group, camp, whatever, kennel, and they constantly repeat these two dogs, and, and they have been very successful. We know of different uh, litters where they had basically a, a what you call an all-game litter. Every one. The first one that comes to my mind is like... Uh, a uh, deacon assassinator, you know what? Well, everybody worked out, you know. The the uh, uh, a lot of people would consider bow to honey punch. Why in the world would you not repeat this? This is just my question about this because is it me? Is it something that's taboo? And unspoken in the bulldog world, the reason why, if it ain't broke, if I went this far, struggling, falling down, getting up again, trying to find the right thing to click, and I get it to click, won't I click it to death? Won't I click that until the wheels come off? Because it's worked, and I know how hard it is to get this to work. 
but you don't see that. You see, they go on and they take this cross and make another cross and it's not a success. So yeah, one had one champion, one two time loser, one this and that, but you, you wonder to yourself, or is it just me wondering to myself? Well, if the other breeding was successful, I can understand you trying something else. Maybe it can get even better. But if I found something that works after this, Flim Flam breeding I just tried, I'm going back to the one that works. And I'm gonna have a yard full of the ones that work. And I have to go to the other side of this coin, whereas it may be other deciding factors in which why these repeat breedings did not take place. We see, we talked about it on Bulldog and Rick Bowl, the special Saturday edition, when they talked, we talked about the reason why the Mayday breeding wasn't repeated because it was a situation where, you know, uh, Mr. Hollingworth sent his female Dolly up to get bread. Tant tried to hang on to the dog. They had a little bit of an altercation and therefore that ruined the possibility of that ever happening again. And that was a very successful litter. Everybody homes in on Mayday, but you know, you got Champion Dragon Lady, Champion Choice. I want to say it was an Annabelle, but it was multiple good dogs out of that one litter. And I think, you know, just imagine to yourself, close your eyes for a moment and imagine what the world would have been like with a repeat breeding of yellow to Hollingsworth dog. You understand? Could you just imagine that? If the fanfare is like that about Mayday, what about his brother Brave Day or whatever that would have came after that? You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, what would it came out of if they had repeat the breedings um, that produce, you know, devastating dogs like Super Nats Grand Champion Ace? You know, if they had repeated that. Or if, if they felt dissatisfied with uh, the way the accident happened with Grand Champion Angus. Hey, we got the mom and dad here. Let's repeat this breeding and make another Angus or possibly two or three. So we understand that there are other deciding factors. Um, you may be strict in your breeding program, the reason why that didn't happen. And you just want to go through your proper process of going through these particular animals and getting the one, you know, I already set out that I'm going to breed this female to this male, this male, and this male. I have a plan for how I want to carry this out because later on down the line, if everything works out well, I'm going to tie these dogs into each other, half brother, sister, things of that nature. So I can't, I don't have that in my plan to do a repeat breed. So it may be other deciding factors that you may, that I may have not thought of, that you may have thought of as to the reason why they have not been more repeat breeders. We know that there have been, but when we start talking about great legendary significant dogs, and some of these dogs don't have the excuse of the sire down was old, um, we can only get it in one time, um, the other one died. A lot of these animals, and you look in history, they were around for a while and they got bred to other males and females years after that. And their their prodigy was out being very successful so why didn't people is it a is it a pride thing is it a thing where well i think if you keep doing that you're gonna get more credit than me i have the sire you have the damn is your breeding if you have the damn well that means you're kind of gonna get more credit than me because you the one actually on paper did the breeding or whatever and i don't kind of want you to have that kind of credit so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna act the uh, act the donkey man not let you get that breeding in again with my stud because I want to put it all in my name. I want my name to be all over the next eight generations. Not yours. I don't want to be tied into your legacy of greatness. And they say, oh yeah, by the way, he read to that other guy's mail. Maybe that's it. So this is my case I'm presenting to the Bulldog community. Is repeat breeding taboo in the Bulldog world? What are your thoughts? Please comment below. Let me know. Help me! And this case is now dismissed.
we're about to get into the third and final case for tonight. The future of the U.S. dog man. Scatter bread heaven or tight bread hell. I put this in this way. You can reverse these if you like, according to your preference. But as we as a bulldog community, especially in the U.S., as we look down the line, and I can't help but look down the line at the future of this breed and where we are as a community, I see a, a fork in the road that's always been there. But it seems as though to me this fork is getting wider by the day because of a variety, a variety of different circumstances that may have been causing this to occur. We see where on one side we look over to Europe and we see many of their great dogs. We look at their pedigrees. They're a little bit of everything and when I say everything just about everything and so and they have been producing in a in a great way over there some people would say once they hit the USR like they energy gets drained the gas get low something happens but I digress but when I look at us who are in the U.S. and I look at the dog programs that are going on, dogs being confiscated left and right, you know, it's, it may get to a point in the future where people are actually scavenging for different bloodlines out for uh, a tight red dog, which I'm about to get to in a few minutes. But because it may be a lack of access to different bloodlines as much as we used to, which goes back to another case that I had about who would be those next torchbearers to get, you know, uh, rebuild those lines that have been in obscurity and bring them back into prominence. If that doesn't happen in the future, uh, if there is a possibility that it could be more of what I would consider tight bread hill. But there's gonna be some Jeep Mede balls, Red Bull Jocko, uh, you know, Turtle Buster type, you know, alligator stuff going on here in the US because I feel as though that may be what happened in Europe where they just they had the lack of access to different stuff. So whatever I could grab and used and I'm just going to use it and you can blame that on well they just trying to be successful and get the complete dog they trying to get to but if you really look at it here in America you may think that our advantages were that we had some of the purest families not just the purest families but we also had a wider variety of these particular families than everyone else uh, because of the lack of access to different strands because of the times that they were in they were they had to be forced to almost concentrate on just their family alone there's really no other way i can get access to other dogs they forced those strands and it caused them to have some of the previous strands in the world so that leads me right into the other side of this, uh, the purebred hell, where because of this lack of access to these different strands, these families are no longer around. You can't find any outs. It may force you, and because of the climate where you just want to isolate and not be around people because of the stigma of the American Pit Bull Terrier, it will force you to be more closed in as were uh, the dog men of old for a different reason than, than what they were. They just had lack of access because the times that they lived in just didn't have internet and in some cases a phone and, you know, and traveling was, you know, somewhat difficult and, and lack of funds in many areas. So that prevented them from having to go out and do that, but there were some that did. 
okay? So because of that climate and people just not wanting to get their dogs taken from them, they may be forced to, you know, have a smaller family of dogs but a tighter bred um, family of dogs. And I'm proposing all of these things in, in as far as this is concerned, in both sides, I'm asking the Bulldog community, are we in the future going to wind up breeding ourselves into a corner? Are we going to breed ourselves into scatterbred, heaven or hell, or tight bread, heaven or hell? Tight bread meaning absolutely too tight and or are we just forced to only stick to the family that we have because we know that there are deaf dealers out here that want to, you know, bring death to these animals just because not not that you're doing anything that you uh, 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 don't have any business doing or anything illegal, but they just any little thing to confiscate your animal. So it's just best maybe in some instances not to just even let people know you even have these animals because of how vicious the times are so you're forced to tighten your blood up you make breeds just to hold on to your line or whatever the case may be you'll wind up with tight bred dogs this could lead to breathing problems it could lead to you having short legs in the front and high legs in the back looking like a, a 1967 Ford Mustang hot rod or something or you could have um, undershot, overbite, you know, um, skin disorders. All type of things can lead to that. And now you bred yourself in a corner that you probably, in certain cases, can't recover from uh, with your family of dogs. And then on this other side with the scatterbred, you know, some people may not agree or may agree that, you know, hey, that, you know, it's all scatterbred anyway. Because we don't know how a lot of this stuff bred, even with the papers. We really don't know how this stuff is bred. So, you know, um, we've been breeding scatterbred dogs all the time. And we've just been playing like we just knew what this, this paper is true when it's really, we knew that this is, the paper is really not worth the ink that it, it was wrote, you know, that was wrote onto the paper. It wouldn't be even worth that in certain cases. And so, they may, feel like that and so but still nevertheless do you feel as though the future of the u.s dog men that we could possibly because of the climate because of everything that's going on because of people who are chasing pedigree papers and people wanting pretty pedigrees rather than just performance animals that are up to whatever task that you put them in um, you're going to wind up with a, a bunch of people with a bunch of tight bread dogs that nobody can use and really a shell of itself or do you think that there will be a situation where it's going to be scatter bread heaven for some people and scatter bread hell for some people in the sense that um, if you were to get an animal in the future it's got so many variations of different animals in it that it's going to be very difficult for you uh, who will try to start up a breeding program to have this dog because it has everything in it. So it's hard to concentrate on one line. You know, you're really getting a dog that's pretty much like a, 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 a Cracker Jack box. You know, you never know what's at the bottom of the Cracker Jack box. You never know what you're going to get. And so it puts you in a bind in that way. And that could possibly, that's more fixable to me, in my opinion. Then a, a tight bread dog with all kind of health problems that you can't really use, but at the same time, to get it back into a concentrated gene pool, that's gonna take years to do. It's gonna take years. So these are the two things that I'm proposing and what I'm um, on each side of the coin. Do you believe that the future of the US dog man is scatterbred heaven or tight bread hell? Please leave your comments below. Tell me what you think. Am I totally out of bounds on this one? Do you think that it, you know, if it wasn't, it won't change anything? Uh, do you think that, well, no, you're looking at it in a bleak way. The future is very bright. 
um, we don't predict that those things will ever happen here in the U.S. It'll never look like what it looks like in Europe or some other places where it's just a pretty much a smorgasbord of whatever blood we can pretty much get our hands on that work and we just throw it in there. You know, and you know, ragu, it's all in there. And so in this case of do you believe that the US dog man is headed for scattered bread heaven or tight bread hell? This case is now dismissed. Now it's time for my closing monologue. I like to say thank you for everybody who checks out Bulldog Court every Saturday and also too find the right family of dogs and then stick with it man go get the best of the best if you can but stick with your family man we need that out here in the Bulldog community for people to stick with it don't follow the trends all the time be a trendsetter or just hold what you got sometimes this is your host get a hold James Cause we got to get a hold of the game, of the game, of the game, of the game. Of the game.